We're going to learn later in this video series just how many different options the kettlebell creates when it comes to our training. This is not just about being able to do curls at a slightly different angle. It's about things like the Turkish get-up, which actually involves, quite simply, getting up. In short, the kettlebell challenges us to move in ways that we just wouldn't do normally, and this is incredibly good for our fitness, our strength, and our overall ability to move functionally and healthily for the rest of the time. So, why is this such a game-changer? Why do we so desperately need moves like this in our training regimes? Well, the simple answer is that we just don't move anymore, and it's killing our brains and our bodies. Most of us will spend the vast majority of our day sitting in an office from 9 to 5, and then onwards to 6 p.m., 7 p.m., or even 8 p.m. While we do this, we hold a single position, curled up in front of the computer with our back hunched, arms stretched forward in front of us, and head craned upwards. This position causes a huge number of health issues. It shortens our pectoral muscles, causing them to become tighter and less mobile. It forces us to develop a permanent hunch, and it does even worse things to our legs. In the sitting position, your leg flexors, those are the leg muscles that pull your feet upwards towards your buttocks, will be shortened, meaning they become tighter and harder to straighten. Meanwhile, your leg flexors, which help your feet kick forward, will become lengthened and stretched, meaning that they lose their normal tautness and strength. This is enough to mean that your legs will now be exerting uneven force on your body and specifically on your pelvis. This will cause your pelvis to tilt forward slightly, creating what's called an anterior pelvic tilt, causing your butt to stick out in an unattractive manner and your overall height to lose a couple of inches. As you can imagine, this is far from functional and it robs you of a lot of movement. Simple things like bending over to touch your toes are an alien concept and knee pain and lower back pain become incredibly likely. The way we sit at work even ruins our breathing. Specifically, our hunched position prevents us from breathing from our guts as we're supposed to and instead forces us to take shallow breaths from our chest cavity alone. This shallow breathing increases our heart rate and the release of stress hormones like cortisol and norepinephrine. In short, it's enough to make us highly wired and tired all the time and it means we don't sleep as well, don't recover as well and generally spend all our time about to snap. Sound familiar? We were never meant to sit. In the wild we didn't have chairs, so instead we would squat around campfires. This is something that most people now cannot do. Try right now to squat down while keeping your heels flat on the floor and see if you're able to squat all the way down. Legs getting tight yet? These are the basic fundamentals of human movement that most of us cannot perform, simply because we don't use our bodies enough the way that they're designed to be used. Not only do we sit, but we sit all the time. You go from sitting at work, to sitting on the train, to sitting on the couch in front of the TV. How many steps do you take during an average day? Do you feel like that's enough? Meanwhile, our complete lack of challenging physical exercise means our hearts are weak, our cells are inefficient at using energy, our blood is thick and viscous, and our other muscles are next to useless. So, how do most of us go about fixing all these issues? We hit the gym. But this actually makes matters even worse. The problem is that a lot of us seem purely interested in training our mirror muscles. and These are the muscles on the fronts of our bodies, our biceps, pecs and abs. And they're the muscles at the tops of our bodies. Of course, this doesn't look terribly good when you wear shorts, but there are more pressing concerns. When you only train the muscles at the front of your body, it once again creates uneven pressure. Your hunched back and tight pecs get worse, creating even more of a hunch and even more potential back pain. Likewise, your abs are also pulling your body forward, as are your biceps. Is it any wonder that you're liable to snap and injure your back at any point? And the way we're training doesn't really translate to real-world strength. You know, 
Think about how often you perform any kind of move resembling a bicep curl in real life. You just don't. When was the last time you had to curl anything through a straight arc in your day-to-day -day routine? Real-world tests of strength involve pushing heavy objects, pulling them, turning them, launching ourselves off uneven ground, and carrying items of varying weights in different hands. It's very rare for us to work in a manner that resembles the way we train in the gym, and thus its usefulness is limited. The problem with something like a dumbbell curl is that it only uses one muscle group. In this regard, it's known as an isolation exercise, or a single joint exercise. Now compare this to a better move like a squat, where you're using a whole number of different muscles in conjunction. This is how the body is designed to be used, and when you perform exercises in this manner, you're challenging yourself to coordinate your body and to maximize its potential strength output. This is much more valuable than training each muscle on its own through a limited range of motion. As you can see, traditional forms of training only compounded the problems that many of us already experienced, and this makes it a big problem. But the kettlebell can change all that, as one of the most practical and versatile pieces of functional strength training equipment in the world. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.